and I think one of the first things that I began to work on as Dean of Students, not only was the student handbook, which was required. I remember that, yeah. Uh, and revise that along with General Alexander and Colonel Allen, the three of us. Get a feeling to the school. And the next thing, Colonel said, we'd like to have you go down to Fort Myers and uh, South Florida and do some recruiting. We knew you did recruiting up in South Carolina, and we're so very good at it. This is at the very beginning. Right. You know, in the beginning, Florida Center Academy was created for a reason, and I know there's been some conversation lately, if you, know, we, you know, if, if you choose to discuss this, was the government involved in some way with FCA? I can, I can say I don't know, however, and that however is very big. My position in military, I was stationed at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, as principal of the Enlisted Men's Elementary Education Program. Remember back in 1957, and I was in military at that time, Sputnik went off. So uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia was the engineer center for the U.S. Army of Was uh, in Washington, D.C. So I was well connected due to the fact of my position. <coughs> the man next door to me, who was head of the cartology of the map making school, was a, a, a fellow by the name of John Eisenhower. By the way, his daddy was also present at that time, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. So here are the principals, Mr. General uh, John Alexander and myself next door, and the two schools. So yes, we met, there was discussion. So yes, I knew there was an inroad of military trying with Sputnik trying to develop private schools with the blessing of the United States government. I think that's about as far I, whether there was money. If but, you look back but this, the same, oh, maybe a decade prior to FCA first opening, you know the government was involved in building cities such as Oak Ridge, the Manhattan Project, in having normal every day. And I know there's been some conversations with FCA somehow a government... And I don't well, see the connection, but I figured... The, the, the I think that it was more of a, a connect of encouragement mm -hmm. to find and develop and find the leadership in military. Don't slough NC, good NCOs, don't slough officers to one side. Take these people and encourage them to go into academia. General Alexander is a good example of that. Head of the prisoners of war for Georgia, South Carolina, uh, and his work with the German prisoners. He took, I don't know how many carloads of German prisoners with five U.S. officers and the rest were German officers and I've forgotten how many hundreds, three or four hundred German prisoners from the Carolinas and Georgia to the beet fields of Colorado going by train to Chicago and being uh, sidecarred onto a sidetrack in Chicago and never lost a German prisoner. And taking these but prisoners. So I, I, the, 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 what I'm getting at is here are military officers that have a good education. Don't throw them to the wayside. Mm -hmm. General Alexander was a good example of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you his background and what he did. And now, as superintendent and building and opening Florida Central Academy the first year. And I can go from Colonel Allen to Colonel Johnson to, to Ken Henry to uh, General Alexander. My gosh, I don't know how many that were all in military schools that had all military background that came together as a group, I would say by the encouragement of the United States government, 
to open up a school, not for discipline problems, mm -hmm. but for academia. Do you think the government learned anything from the FCA experience? I learned later on that we were part of the initial program, but many, many years later, mm -hmm. just from little comments that Colonel Allen made to me. Now, which program is this? Or the entire academic program. Okay. Everything, the beginning of Florida Central Academy. We had military officers who were our principals, our superintendent, mm -hmm. our guidance people, myself, uh, discipline of the school as dean of students, all of us working in military schools which are involved with the United States of the US ROTC program. Yes, without question. And then with Sputnik coming up, I know I was released from active duty as principal of the Elizabeth Elementary at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, due to Sputnik, myself personally. I do know this. So if I'm one, how many more were deactivated from active duty and sent back into civilian life, but completing? Now, I completed all of my work in military through the reserves in South Carolina. I did not accept, and that was another thing, I did not accept going to Florida Central Academy until I knew I had completed all of my military commitments in the U.S. Army Reserves in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And that happened the summer, early summer of 1960, when I was there, and therefore I went down. Changing gears just a bit. When you look back, how many lives did you touch through your years of academia at Florida Central? Is there any one memory that stands out that made you who you are? I think the thing that Carlisle was a very, very fine training school. It was all Citadel men, and I was encouraged by the Citadel to go there and start starting my teaching career. It was well known in South Carolina, fine, fine reputation, but a good, solid military school. The training I received there, not only through the military, but military with academia, because it was academics, I think helped me more than anything else in developing the premise of the ideas of leadership, development of leadership with Florida Central Academy without the military uniform or all of the military regulations. But taking that part that I went through as an a in academia, because I was trained at the Carlisle in Bamberg, South Carolina, in academic, but also the military. Separate the military, take the leadership, put that in with academics and open up and develop and help run Florida Central Academy. Do you think a school such as FCA, if it was created today, would survive? Yes. We're non-military. We developed, and our record shows it, we developed good leadership. Something you can't buy. The, the military teaches that without question. We took that, instead of putting you, as you were a student, in a uniform, mm -hmm. you had the privilege of being in civilian clothes and being cared for as a young man, as a civilian in family life, quote, adopted family of Florida Central Academy, but teaching you the leadership plus good academic background. See, and I will absolutely agree with you, being on the other side of the equation that you were, that what I took takeaway from Florida Central is that after two years there, two summers in Colorado, it's very simple. When I got to college, it already gave me the confidence of independent living, decision making when it comes yes. to and you were already well ahead of other students when they were first arriving at college because you've already lived independently, unlike military schools. And this is just my own opinion. We had a lot of freedom, probably much more than many of us would have had at home. But we were accountable for our actions, and that made it important. Well, I think the, the, the answer is this, is your own little scenario of you uh, had to remain on the campus as you watched the bus load of students 
go off to Orlando to have a nice afternoon. And as we said, and it was just once that you did that, and you never, and that, that was part of the training. You know, uh, when mom and dad tell you, we need you to rake the leaves in the front yard, and then, and then, and then, and you get the, the sort of the talk back. There was no talk back. But if you were asked uh, the same thing, well, we want you to wreck the uh, straw grass on the, on the driveway in the back there so, and take that and put it in the wheelbarrow because we need it over yon yonder for the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And you learn to start raking straw grass and how difficult that little problem turns to be and how the back became a little bit sore, how nice it was not to have to do that but go on a nice bus ride and enjoy yourself at a movie or at a mall, there is how it weighed and, and the discipline was there. Well, I might not have understood it then. I fully understand it now. now you do. Bob, I tell you, this has been a pleasure to speak with you. Andy, it has been a distinct okay. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.